With craving stomach, I readied myself to trudge on and reach the rocky peninsula. Before I did, I looked at my raft and an earlier thought of oddness prevailed. I couldn't recall dragging my raft further up the beach, yet there it was, firmly on the sand, with noticeable tracks behind it. After dismissing this thought, that which was trifling in such an overwhelming situation, I set on what was now an easier downward incline. As I rambled down, I constantly remained vigilant for any sign of life, or even a passing ship. I became sure there may be some sort of animal life on this island, as from time to time I periodically heard twigs crack and bushes rustle. It didn't seem long before I finally reached the lower rocks and was now walking on the jagged peninsula. I had removed my sodden boots back at the raft and it was now my feet that seemed to be causing me the most pain as they were cut and bruised and had started to look quite virulent. I sat on a rock for a while and quietly sobbed. Since my ship had gone down into the depths of mystery, I had visited death's door enough times to suppress particular concerns of the possible festering and poisoning of my wounds, although gangrene now had become the highlight of my thoughts. I sat on the rocks for some time, allowing the salt water to sting and aid my feet, and as I did, I scanned the horizon through squinted eyes with the hope of sighting a passing ship. My musings were interrupted by the sight of something in the water. Fish, and plenty of them, darting around just beneath the surface. I made a couple of wild swipes that I knew would be in vain. Oh, for some mesh netting. Thoughts of my family came flooding into my mind. I had initially suppressed such thoughts to keep depression and sadness in abeyance, but now it was all I could think of. Maybe these thoughts would give me strength of mind, for I was beginning to give up all hope. I slithered into the sea. It felt good to be immersed in water, especially after the sweaty heat I had endured. I slowly swam through the cooling water, which offered a soothing effect despite the salty pain I felt. I decided to swim back to where my raft was. It would be quicker and easier, although due to my fear of sharks, I would keep very close to the rocks. If it were not for my sores, this sauntering swim in these balmy waters would have been a pleasure. Within about 15 minutes I had reached my raft. I lay on the sand for a short while, exhausted, contemplating what my next move would be. Motivation was in short supply, as my mind seemed willing, but my body was not, and once again I allowed the cloak of death to warmly wrap itself around me. The easy way out, I proposed, uncharacteristically, as I dozed off. I awoke with a start, just as a shark was about to clamp down on me. My worst nightmare had come to visit me whilst I was catnapping. Even in this frightening dream of danger and fear, I had briefly welcomed my end, only to be delivered back into the real nightmare that was ensuing. Dusk was setting in, and the breeze had cooled as the sun had slowly dipped, Bouts of shiver began to rattle through my body, and all of a sudden, I felt cold. Were it not for my fear of sharks, I felt sure that the decision of going back into the sea and allowing myself to drown would have been a facile one. Dispensing with this thought, I rose to my feet and desperately tried to adopt a positive mindset. I decided to go up to the water gully and try and find somewhere adequate to bed down before I perished from hypothermia. I pulled my raft from the encroaching tide and from it bundled up as much canvas as I could manage. I trudged back up to the gully, convincing myself that if I could keep the cold at bay and gain a good night's rest, then, in the morning, if I was still alive, I would try and catch a fish or snare a rabbit, if, of course, there were any on this damned island. By the time I had reached the water channel, the light had faded and dark was setting in fast. I was fortunate enough to find a good sized depression in the ground where I could comfortably lay. I gathered up a fair quantity of foliage and placed it in the hollow. I lay down on it, wrapping the canvas loosely around my body and snuggled down the best I could. After moving some nagging protrusions, I almost felt quite comfortable and, to my surprise, nearly warm. Sleep came quickly. I had a restless night, tossing and turning from pain and aching muscles along with stomach cramp that had me, at times, curling up into a ball. Several times throughout the night I had bolted upright, 
thinking I had heard rustling in the undergrowth, leading me to hope there was some kind of animal life on the island. This meant food. But fire. I need fire. Shut up, I told myself. Tomorrow is another day. Dawn eventually came, and my hunger spurned me into action. After my breakfast of water, I descended back to the beach where my raft was. As I stepped out into the open from the shaded canopy, I felt a burst of heat. It was a pleasure to feel the balmy warmth of the sun, although within minutes I was sweating profusely. I marched on to the warm sand with a determined positive attitude. My plan was to try and crack some wood and attempt to whittle with some sharp stones a crude spear with which to catch a fish. My resolute stride onto the beach came to an abrupt halt. I stood dumbfounded and began to panic. Surely I was in the right spot. On looking around I recognised the area. This is where my raft should be, but was nowhere in sight. My initial and only thought was that the tide had come in further than I realised and carried it off. I scanned the sea but there was nothing but the horizon. I sank to my knees. I had had it. I was all in and was beaten. I stared at the sand and waited for an angel to appear and whisk me off to paradise. This thought caused me to smile and then chuckle and then I began to laugh, hooting in hysterics. I felt unhinged and couldn't care less anymore. Well come on, take me from this fucking world, I bellowed to no one. I stood up and desperately thought of what would be the easiest way I could end this miserable existence. Smashing my head on a rock would not do. I wouldn't care to bleed to death for an hour or so. Purposefully drowning was probably the simplest and most straightforward method. I could just march into the sea and end it all within seconds. And as for the sharks, fuck them. Hollering and shouting, I began my resolute march to the water's edge. And as I did, I detected a movement in my peripheral vision. This brought me to a standstill and my cackling abruptly ceased. The movement had come from over by the rocks, something of reasonable size, like a monkey or some such creature. I remained perfectly still and did not avert my gaze towards it. My heart began to beat rapidly. I felt alarmed, for in my state of suicidal insanity there still seemed to remain that flicker of hope and desire. I turned my head very slowly towards the rocks. There was nothing there. I crouched down and crept towards the boulders and after several steps I stopped in my tracks. In front of me, lying on the sand, was a small leather pouch. I hovered over it as if it was some kind of strange animal. After gawking at it for some time, I reached down and grabbed it up. I had a notion that the object would disappear or turn into a pebble. It did neither as my fingers felt the leather when I picked it up. It was real and there were contents. I unsecured the thin leather lace that was tied around the neck of the pouch and tipped the innards out into my palm. There were two objects that I instantly recognised. A small lump of grass rock and a steel bracket. These were, indeed, items for creating a spark to make a fire. Where on earth did this come from? I stared at the pouch with eyes and mouth wide open. I rummaged it with my finger and, to my further credulity, found some fine shavings clinging to the bottom, these being tinder for readily catching fire from a spark. I found myself in two minds, not knowing whether to whoop with joy or to throw the pouch down and continue my march to the sea and beyond. For what good was a fire to me? I had nothing to cook and why would I want to keep my starving wretched body warm? I was experiencing extreme emotions now. Do I kill myself now or look at this find as some kind of seraphic intervention? Even now, in my hour of need, I had refused to renegade on my atheist beliefs. I naturally assumed that the pouch had been washed ashore or dropped by others who had been here before. I threw the pouch down and stood for a while.